The Winter Update is our holiday celebration of all things Halo. We're delivering our Campaign Network Co-op, our Forge Open Beta, we're shipping a whole bunch of cool things inside of our free-to-play multiplayer product. It's all free, coming out on November 8th of this year. So for the winter update, we're releasing two new maps, a new mode, a 30-tier battle pass, two events, and match XP. And all of that is free. We have two official Forge created maps um, coming in the winter update. There are two multiplayer and arena maps. One's called Argyle and one's called Detachment. Detachment has the first teleporter that's in an official Halo Infinite multiplayer map. From a gameplay perspective, having something where really a teleporter plays to like a flank or like kind of an assault on a position in a surprise way is super cool. And like I think the way it really worked into that map played out really well and adds a lot of counterplay to like people hanging out on the island and camping that space. Argyle is cool because it has this big, big kind of open central yard and it has some really interesting flank routes around the sides. And so you can go like really just frontal assault and try to push your way in or kind of be a little sneakier around the sides. Having this big kind of central courtyard has created a lot of really cool gameplay that feels different than a lot of things we have in Infinite so far. The new mode in the Winter Update, Covert One Flag, is our first asymmetrical mode. One team uh, is the attacker and one team is the defender. The attackers have unlimited active camo at their disposal and then the defenders have the threat sensors. And so they're kind of you know, spotting and it plays like a cat and mouse game, which is really fun. One of the biggest pieces of feedback that we've gotten since we launched is that people really want a system that gives them points, XP points, for just playing the game. The new match XP system actually rewards players for playing. As you're playing matches, you get XP. If you win, you get a little bit of bonus XP. If you perform well, you get a little bit of bonus XP. And we're trying to tune that system so that it actually gets you moving through the battle pass a lot quicker than we have in the past. The winner update has a 30 tier uh, free battle pass that is full of really fun stuff. That battle pass is full of reach stuff and some player favorites like the CQC and CQB, armor attachments with knives. It's really, really cool. And again, it's free. We also have two events going on with the winter update. The one in December is called Winter Contingency 2. And then in January, we have the Joint Fire event. I'm excited for folks to jump in to start enjoying the new additions that are coming with the November update. Campaign co-op has always been a, a big part of the Halo experience. Being able to play with your friends, do all sorts of cool and fun things together that you can't do in single player. And with Halo Infinite, we've made this much more expansive, wide open world. And with the release of Network Co-op, I'm just looking forward to people jumping in with their friends, exploring the world, having fun with our sandbox, just mixing it up and getting into that crazy, over the top Halo action in the campaign. Whether you're playing single player or you're playing co-op with your friends, any progress made is saved. Um, so it's not a case now where, you know, you and I are going to get together, we're going to play, and we're going to play your game. What we're going to do is start everybody at the place where the furthest behind player was in their individual save file that they picked. Nobody misses any of the campaign, nobody's breaking the sequence, and you're still getting to experience the full story in order. Objects are the same way. Collectibles, you know, data pads, um, even Spartan cores. So if you've collected a Spartan core, let's say, and I haven't, when we go to that Spartan core, it's still interactive. And any one of us can activate it to collect it. Those who haven't collected that particular Spartan core, they get it. And a fun little feature uh, specifically regarding skulls is at the beginning of the fire team when you're setting it up, the, the set of skulls we'll have to choose from is all the skulls that everybody has brought. And so it's a bit of bragging moment from you. You know, you can say, uh-huh, yeah, 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 birthday party, that's mine. <laughs> With moving to a semi-open world Halo game, we wanted to make it so that you have this ability to go explore, find things, go take on a, an outpost or a, a base or something like that, however you guys want to do it. You know, it's like, hey, you go take that tower, we're going to go take this tower, you know, and you can split up and do your stuff. But there is a limit because it is a co-op game, so it's not the idea that we're being put into a world and you all just go do your own game. The idea is to play together. That's, that's the focus. If you're in one of our interior maps, 
Uh, these are more of the linear, traditional Halo style levels. As you progress through the level, if someone in the fire team is too far behind, then they'll be brought up with the rest of the team. When you're out on the ring, what we have is a radius-based system. We went to the largest base that we have in the game and then basically made the space double that. So you have tons of room to go outside of that, come back, lots of room for aerial vehicles. Unlike previous Halos, you don't lose your weapons when you die in this one. You respawn with the same stuff you had when you die. So there's really not a mechanical penalty other than the respawn time. And your teammates have to be safe to spawn on. We're really diminishing sort of the, the domineering nature of the fire team leader, you know, because it is no longer the idea that we're playing the fire team leader's game. Everybody's playing their own games. Anybody can skip a narrative sequence. Anybody can pick up objects in the world. Anybody can trigger a mission replay, fast travel to a new location, trigger those kinds of things. Um, a fun one is <laughs> the, the when you open up the TAC map and you play a, place a marker, anybody can turn that back off. <laughs> Griefing is a very important aspect of uh, co-op. You can kill each other, which can be fun as well. Load everybody up into a, a Razorback and then just drive off a cliff and, and, and giggle the whole time. <laughs> and then of course we've also got a bunch of new achievements, both for co-op and mission replay, that emphasize either playing together with friends, or in the case of the replay achievements, going back and revisiting parts of missions that you couldn't have visited uh, before we had the mission replay feature. One of the achievements is basically you got to take out a certain number of enemies with a gravity hammer hanging outside of a, of a, of a vehicle uh, while you're doing it, which is pretty fun. The team here at 343, we've been working really hard uh, on campaign co-op. We're excited to get it into your hands and uh, see what you guys can come up with, see what kind of fun you get into. We call it Chaosome <laughs> because it's just awesome, the amount of chaos and just crazy stuff that you can do. And doing it together, it's just, it's just really, really fun. As part of the free winter update, we're super excited to release the Forge Open Beta, our most powerful Forge tool yet. Well, ever since Halo 3, Forge has been the way that we unlock all the creativity of our players. It allows them to jump in, make their own maps and modes, whole new experiences. When Forge launched, it was a cool tool for the community to start playing with maps and having influence on maps where spawners were, place, moving some objects around. It wasn't quite a fully robust tool set for building levels yet. And that's where it's kind of evolved to and then beyond. Now it's like its own little game editor. With the release of the beta, we're inviting everyone to participate in Forge. And the good news is all the work that you do on your maps and modes and anything else inside of Forge, that's gonna be saved and continue on. Basically how Forge works is you go into Forge and you place a bunch of different kind of objects to create a space where players can play in. And then you decorate it with different materials or colors, uh, lights, um, VFX and audio. And they can then save them, they can share them, and then play them with other players. Even if you're not intending to, to play Forge, Forge has a lot to offer you because all those players who are making stuff with Forge will be available to you and so you'll be able to create custom games and play that content with your friends. Our Forge system that people are going to experience with the Winter Update, it is at a whole other level. Like, there's nothing that we've done with Forge like this before, and the type of content that people are gonna be able to make for Halo Infinite is insane. In Halo Infinite Forge, we've increased the object count to around 7,000 objects. In Halo 5, for comparison, it was 1,600 objects. As a forger, I think the thing that's gonna surprise us a lot is be able to scale objects. Like for example, like these objects look like these massive pipes are running underneath ground for this facility. It is literally just a small cable or a hose that he's scaled up and changed material on. I personally think scale is gonna be changing a lot of how these maps are gonna be looking visually and it's gonna blur the line from a forge map to a dev quality map. I'm excited about a lot of things, but I think I'm most excited about the visual scripting language. You know, this is the deepest players have been able to get inside our, our code, our scripting language. Even if you're not familiar with visual scripting systems, it's really easy to get started, to start to recombine things. You can drag nodes into your scripting space and draw out the, the events and the functions that you want to do in your map. We've been able to get you a lot closer to the systems. Uh, we've got over 100 different nodes that I could only dream of back as a player in Halo 5. I'm very, very excited to be able to offer these to players, like things that I wanted to do before, and you know, finally we get to do them now. 
you know, whether it was Griffball or Infection, a whole bunch of things that are now core to Halo, all came from mode work inside of Forge. And I think with the new visual scripting system, players are gonna have the ability to do even cooler, more interesting things than they've had a chance to do in the past. That's gonna be super exciting. Now, Forge Launch will be supporting six canvases, and moving forward, we'll be adding to canvases as we can. The canvas diversity we have is pretty fantastic. In fact, we have a player requested canvas, which is blank, which is just an empty canvas. So no matter what kind of experience you're trying to create, the canvas backdrop, well, we've got your back. We're super excited to bring NavMesh into, into Forge. NavMesh is basically data that Spartan bots rely on to navigate a map. This is the first time that bot support has appeared in Forge in the Halo series. It always just blows me away, people's creativity, taking things that we've done and making them new again with their own imagination. We've already seen a lot of amazing content being created by the community and our Forge Council. It's super encouraging to already see before we've even released this, what this thing is capable of and the amount of content that they're gonna be able to create. It's, it's kind of unstoppable. The Forge Council is already making a wide variety of experiences. I've seen really amazing arena maps. I've seen crazy scripts. They are really pushing Forge. Once Forge releases, we're really gonna be watching what comes out because we wanna find the cool, the best of, right? And surface those things to players in any way we can. The more we can take those things and kind of put them up on a pedestal and inside of the rest of our game and kind of let the rest of the community play them, that's super cool. And that's really the heart and spirit of what Forge is. What people should expect with Forge is that much like the rest of the game, it's just gonna to continue to grow and evolve. As we add new game modes and new objects with Forge or just you know in our, our suite of modes in general, We'll be bringing those things into Forge and adding some of that scripting functionality so that the players will have access to all that kind of stuff. Forge is going to evolve based on what the community wants, right? We've already started a good dialogue with the, the Forge Council. They've given us some good feedback. Once Forge goes live, I'm, I'm super excited to hear what the community says because that's going to be our, our North Star in terms of what Forge turns into. On behalf of the entire Forge team, we are so excited to see what the community makes with Forge. It's been a long journey, and we're excited to finally share this with you. I think this is the start of a new part of the journey of Infinite and where we continue to evolve as a service and how the game will continue to expand alongside of the community as we keep releasing new features and making the game crazier and more fun. The Forge Open Beta is available on November 8th, along with Campaign Network Co-op and Mission Replay and some great additions to our multiplayer experience. All part of the winter update.